Welcome back. Yep, you're on Smartwatch Ticks, and today is the day. This is going to be a rather lengthy video. We're going to go through what you need to do to install the what I consider essential apps on your number one D5 smartwatch phone that is a true Android, basically like a phone in a watch format. There's some really interesting tricks and uh, techniques to this, so you're going to want to pay careful attention to some stumbling spots that I ran into and how to get out of them as we go along. This will be put together in several different parts because, like I said, it's going to be rather lengthy, and I want to cover everything in one video. So, let's begin. Actually, I already began. I'm giving you a bit of a head start. You see, I went into the Google Play Store already, Presuming, of course, through settings that you're on the internet, you want to make sure you've got a Wi-Fi connection and you've already set up your uh, Google account so you have access to your Google Play Store to be able to download apps. We covered that in a three-part series already on getting your device all set up for that. Now we're picking up from that point and taking us into the place where we're going to actually start downloading the apps, if this will let me get to the Play Store. The first app that I uh, am installing is a particular class of apps that allow you to remotely control uh, and move files back and forth between uh, your watch and another device, like a computer or your phone or a tablet. I've chosen MobiZen. I'm comfortable with that. There are others on the market. Whatever you are comfortable with, if you have a different one, go ahead and set it up now. MobiZen is really nice because it's an app that you can install directly on your Android device. I use this to control my watch, my phones, and my tablet. And it can be operated from within a web browser from any device. Um, and I like, often use my computer. Today I'm going to try to do it with a Windows tablet. But setting it up is a little bit tricky. So what I've gone and done is search for MobiZen, uh, found it on the Play Store, downloaded it, and it's installed, and I'm ready to begin by opening it. Okay, well, during that pause, I tried every which way to demo how you would install MobiZen, but it's so difficult because every screen flashes your user ID, your email, your password, all that stuff up there. So I gave up. Um, you guys just go ahead and uh, install MobiZen and you'll get to this point where what you see is that what I'm doing on the watch is showing up on the computer. This is a Windows tablet running MobiZen in Chrome browser. And if I change it on the watch or on the uh, tablet or the computer, it moves it on the watch as well. So I have remote control. There are two things, though, that I ran into as stumbling blocks in installing this on the watch I want to call your attention to. The first, when you go through to set it up, you're going to get to a point where it wants a two-step uh, verification. You attempt to connect from the tablet or computer, and it's going to put up a six-digit code that you need to enter on the watch. You can enter it with a tiny keyboard, and go ahead and you're connected. However, every single time you're going to get a new six-digit code you have to put in when you try to connect. So the suggestion is the first time, instead of putting in the correct six-digit code, put in something wrong and say OK. It'll say it's incorrect and it'll bail out of the keyboard so you see the actual screen where the data entry field is. I wish I could show that to you, but follow along. Before you type in or activate the keyboard again, there's a little statement underneath it with a check mark that you can put beside it that says, don't ask for this ever again. In other words, it's a trusted connection. You want to make sure that you tap it and get the little green check mark on it. Then tap in the data entry field and tap in the correct six digit number and activate the connection. From then on, anytime you try to connect from that same computer or tablet, it will go through seamlessly. All right? That's the first important thing you want to do. Secondly, when you get to this point where you're actually connected, in order to be able to type on the big keyboard on your computer or tablet instead of the tiny one here, we need to go back and activate that keyboard. 
So you got to go back into settings if you don't have that quick keyboard installed and going to uh, our uh, keyboards, which are in the language and input area. And we want to go down to the keyboards and notice that the keyboards that are available now includes MobiZen. So you want to make sure you tap and select MobiZen as an active keyboard. You don't need to make it your default keyboard. You just need to make it active. If you make it active, then you'll be able to import text from here where, where you can bring up the keyboard or when it asks for it, it'll automatically come up, which we're about to get to right now. So what I've done off camera is use MobiZen to navigate to the Google Play Store, tap in Clean Master, locate the app and download it. I'm cutting that stuff out and for the future apps so that you don't have to sit there and watch the thing load. We just go right to it. Just know that in the background, MobiZen is my application that I use the keyboard to get to where we want to go. You can use the install keyboard if you need to. We're installing and using Clean Master, and there's a reason for that. It is uh, one of the few, if not the only app I've found that's going to actually allow us to sneak behind the back door of the front that number one has put over the watch. I don't know if you're familiar with the way you normally work with Android apps on a smartphone, but if you go into the uh, Applications Manager, you normally get the listing of downloaded apps and SD card and all apps and running apps and things like that. And you can do things like clear cache and uninstall them or force quit. You're familiar with that? You don't have access to that in this watch, although it's running pure Android. What number one has done is overlaid in the system uh, an uninstall app um, front end that all you can do is touch on an app and uninstall it. But it doesn't allow you to get to that finer detail of, in particular, moving apps from your primary memory to your external memory, as they call it, which frees up more of your tiny little available memory that you can load your apps into by putting a good portion of them in the secondary memory. This allows you to do that, and we'll be seeing that later on. This is kind of compressed. Um, you have four buttons on here. One is for junk files and one is to boost it. And that one's, I guess, for virus or something. But the one we're looking for is the one down here in the lower corner. We tap on that one. And it brings us into an uninstall area. I'm hitting my buttons too fast. Where it loads up all of the apps that you have installed, right? If you get the, and touch the move button over here, it will show you any of the apps that you have installed that could be moved to the SD card. We don't have any yet, but we'll come back and look at that. When you tap one of those uh, apps and say move it to the SD card, it will take you to what you're used to on the uh, phone, that page where you can... Um, force quit or delete your cache or your data, and most importantly, move the app to the SD card. And then it leaves out of there. So we have a Clean Master installed for that purpose and also to remove junk as we accumulate junk as we're installing apps. All right, MobiZen, Clean Master, let's move on. App Backup and Restore is the third of the apps we're going to put on our watch, and this one is really powerful. We're going to do an installation from the Google Play Store. It's all set up for that. This will be the last one you're going to see me do from the Play Store because it's actually this application that I used to back up all the other apps that I'm going to be putting on the watch, all of the ones that are core and all the other ones that I'm going to be moving in and out from time to time. You notice that it says that it is installed and Clean Master is jumping in and saying, hey, you can remove the APK if you want. Don't do that. This is the actual installation file that you want to leave on the watch, okay? So say cancel. And move on. 
There we go. All right. We have it installed. We're going to open it. And your backup files will be lost if you do a factory reset or switch your phone. And uh, it's basically saying all the things you're backing up could be lost. And that's okay because we are probably going to back up that whole folder to a computer anyway later on. And you could always restore that folder. So we're into the program right now. And uh, you can see that it's showing you all of the files that we actually have installed on the watch. These are the ones that we've done in the previous videos. And now we're going to back them up. Now, I want to show you something. Let's run it on the, comp on the uh, phone here. Y you notice down here it says backup. I could put a check mark beside any one of them by touching it, and then I could hit backup. But there's a little box here that if I touch, it will check all of the ones that, uh, literally all of them if you want to, or uncheck them all. That box is off the screen here, but I can activate it by just touching in that little white space there. You see they're all checked? And now they're ready to be backed up. Once this app is installed, it's as simple as just hitting backup. And it's in the process of doing it. And there they're done. Okay, 12 of 12 have been backed up. And if I go over here and hit the archived, you'll see they are in here along with all the other ones that I had previously put in here. So that's app backup and restore. It's going to reside on your phone and it's going to be one of the three basic programs that we've installed in this first part. You don't need to do any of these three if you want to kind of brute force the next segment just using the keyboard on the watch and not worrying about having these things backed up on your watch as well. Moby Zen is what we used for remote control. Clean Master is what we've used to manage and monitor how these apps are being installed. And then App Backup and Restore is the one that we're using to archive our apps on the watch. In part two of this uh, core app installation process, we're going to get down and dirty into the ones that are really functional utilities that you're going to want to have on your watch. Alrighty, we'll be back shortly with that uh, second segment of this series.